hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com this is let me bore you to sleep and I've got no idea what number this is I think it's number 30 or 31 something like that or 26 I lose track honestly I lose track of these things so at the moment I'm sitting on my big black squeaky chair and my little boy Andre is cuddled up on top of me so that's a bit weird he's uh, Andre's my little ferret he's my son and for some reason he's decided to have a cuddle which is lovely I love it when he cuddles it's uh, one of my favourite things actually in the whole world not that I've experienced everything there is to experience in the whole world but just having him cuddle up to me without him wanting something you know not not wanting food or water not that he's always got food and water but you know without him wanting me to take him out or to do something it's just nice to have him just cuddle me and just because he wants to cuddle his daddy so that's nice unfortunately um, my balls are itchy so I want to scratch them but I can't because I'm holding him and I know that as soon as I move one hand he'll just get off my lap not my lap, he's actually on my belly on my chest but I've got to scratch it because it's too itchy I think it's just the heat you know <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you this so only listen to this or watch this if you're watching the video but still an, an audio isn't it even if it's on video uh, when you can safely close your eyes because unless you've got a really 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 strong boredom threshold um, but even then just just to be sure you know I, I don't like the idea if you're um, I don't know in a submarine or something and you're in charge of the oxygen levels of the submarine and you know and you fall asleep and you know, I just yeah, you know, I don't want don't that responsibility. So just ideally, only listen when you can close your eyes and drift off into a. Really, it's. I think sleeping is a much nicer alternative than listening to me talking about pretty much nothing I think the most people's minds would just say you know what I can't take this anymore I'm just gonna go to sleep this uh, this is a bit pointless it's a bit a little bit monotonous and uh, that's part of the reason that's part of the the process of why I do what I do here not on every session, I mean, sometimes I've got an itchy side now. But this, uh, the itch, the itch is moving. I've got a movie scratch. Movie scratch, moving scratch. So the, the point behind these uh, let me bore you to sleep sessions really is that I just talk at you about stuff that you've got no interest in and there's only really two options I think really generally 
in a situation like this. Um, you've got me talking, you're listening to me. The two options really are either you press the stop button or you go to sleep, you drift off. Because that's, I think that's the the two kind of options that happen. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying please press the stop button because, you know, although this will be boring for you, it's extremely exciting for me. So I get to tell you about my my life and uh, all the stuff that I find interesting, but <laughs> nobody else does. So that's the. Uh, so everyone's a winner, really. I get to be exciting, or feel like I'm being exciting, and you get to be incredibly bored. To the point where you just just start to drift, and that's natural. It's a natural thing to happen because I don't know about you, but. The amount of times in the past that I've been sitting, listening to a person, and I'll be in the same room as them. They'll maybe be you know, sitting in a chair, might be made of wood, might be made of metal, but the story isn't really about the chair. So I'll be in a room with somebody talking, they'll be talking to me, and I'll be so bored. I'm not talking like all the time, I'm, you know, it's just occasionally it happens and I just, it might not just be that I'm bored, it might be that I'm tired and that person has decided to fill me in on every thought they've had in the last five years. And decide just to tell me all this stuff, and I don't know, it's just. I think some of the hardest ones to listen to are conversations where somebody's telling me about a conversation they previously had with somebody else about some topic that. I don't really understand, you know, I don't I don't know anything about that person that my friend is talking about. And I don't always find it that easy to be interested in people that I like. So if it's somebody that I've never met, I have very little just doesn't grip me, doesn't doesn't grab hold of me toenails and shake me around and like get me all excited and not that grabbing hold of my toenails would get me excited. You know what I'm just saying as as an example. So So just let you know that you can listen to all of my stuff and watch all of my videos on my website, Jason newland.com I've been uh, I actually swapped over so I was I was hosting my website with Wix um, but financially I had to start making some cuts so I got rid of that website uh, the host I now host my website with Blogger because it's free and um, but it's okay. I've I've hosted with them many times over the years, and I've hosted with pretty much every web host there is, actually, including uh, you know building a website myself, WordPress, and you, you name it. I've been with them, but at the moment. Everything's now, you know, it's all with Blogger, the website. So I've been organizing my sessions 
so that everything's easier to find. And so, for example, if you go to jasonnewland.com, the actual website, in the menu at the top of the page, or near the top of the page, underneath the banner, a picture of Andre, there's, um, there's a page called Courses. As you click on there, there's uh, listed all my courses. I say all of them because I, not all of them are on there yet because I'm still in the process of building the pages, but they will all be on there. There's a few already. Uh, and you click on one of those and it will take you to a page where, for example, um, 10 Day Chronic Pain Tuesday or Chronic Pain Tuesday, which was a 10 day chronic pain course that I did last year. You click on that in the courses section and it just lists each day. And underneath each day, there's a stream audio, which you link that you can click, which takes you to another page with the embedded audio on there that you can play. Or you can click on the watch video link, which will take you to another page where the video is embedded, YouTube video. Or you can click on the download MP3 and that will allow you to instantly download the MP3, totally free of charge. And that's the same with all the courses and also with the insomnia, uh, sleep and insomnia. That's on my website now and chronic pain is on my website. Uh, there are others that will be on there. For example, relaxation, but that's going to be done last because there's about 168 sessions. So it's quite a, quite a task, but it's getting there. I'm quite pleased how it's going at the moment. And since I put those pages, the links onto the into the menu, I've been having quite a few clicks, quite a few people go in there. So I think it's always nice to have a hub, you know, a little, um, I don't know, like headquarters in a way, isn't it? I know this isn't a business, but it's still a big operation in a sense. Uh, 800 sessions, if not probably more than 800. Um, quite a few podcasts, probably about 5,000 downloads and plays a week, uh, growing as well, always growing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a full-time job if I was able to work, like if it was a full-time. I know, I, what do I mean by that? I could easily spend eight hours a day you know, five days a week and I still wouldn't get everything done that's needed to be done. It's, it's, it's ongoing. It's uh, never going to be finished and the promotion side of things is never, it's never completed. It's always ongoing, um, which is part of, part of the thing I like about it really. But there's certain aspects that I would like to have completed, you know? I've now got an itchy lower back, so the chair is going to squeak while I scratch my back. The chair isn't squeaking, it's not really connected to me scratching my back. It's just the, the movement of me moving. The movement of me moving causes the chair to move, therefore squeak or creak. Okay, give me two seconds. Oh, that's nice. See, yeah, uh, I'll tell you another thing is, um, I think last Monday, or Tuesday, or last Sunday, or Saturday, it's what, one day, I, maybe it was the week before, I did one of these, uh, let me bore you to sleep, and I read out the stats of you know, all my stats for the, pretty much for the last month. 
don't worry, I'm not going to do that tonight or today. I'm saying tonight because it is the evening. It's Sunday evening. It's probably about 20 past 10 ish. So I won't be doing that. But I might be talking about the stats. And there was a reason I brought the subject up, but I've forgotten what it is. And um, what was the reason for me thinking about the stats? Oh yeah, on iTunes, and it's not, it's not really called iTunes anymore, it's called Podcast something, I forget, but it's Apple Podcast, or Apple Podcasts. But it's still iTunes, it's still everyone thinks, still knows it as iTunes. I'm not sure why they've changed it really. But although iTunes, I suppose they're separating the podcasts from iTunes where you buy, so iTunes is still there. I lose track, I can't, I can't remember. I think maybe iTunes is still there, but the podcasts are like a separate thing now because they're so popular. Not, not mine, I'm just talking generally. And although mine are okay, I do all right. And I've got about 30, 1, 5, 10, 15, I've got about 25 podcasts on iTunes, um, maybe 30. Uh, so iTunes now do the stats. They actually show their own stats about how many um, plays and how many devices are used and how many hours and the average time per device for each podcast. And it was quite interesting because I was just looking at it and it's about, they've not been doing the stats for very long, but since they've been doing the stats for my podcasts I've got about 170 hours worth I think or maybe more 170 hours worth of people streaming on iTunes that's and that's not with my main podcast my main podcast I don't know what the stats are for there because I've not looked uh, I just go by SoundCloud which is Although SoundCloud is my main podcast, I get, yeah, I probably get more on Spreaker. Sometimes I get more on Podomatic, because that's also on iTunes as well. And that's a sleep hypnosis podcast. I think it's sleep, sleep deeply, something like that. The only problem with the pod, podomatic one is I run out of uh, bandwidth quite easily because instead of paying for the, I was paying for it, now I've reduced it to um, the free one. So I had to delete quite a few of my sessions from the, the sleep sessions. And also I, you know, so I had 189 downloads, I think, two days ago. And that in itself probably used up most of the bandwidth because most of the sleep sessions are fairly long they're mainly yeah half an hour to an hour long and that's a shame really but uh, there you go you know I, I used to have more sessions more podcasts on Podomatic I used to have my seven day insomnia cure and my 30 day relaxation plan and both of those were on Podomatic and they were also connected to iTunes 
and I put them on there in 2011 and between them over the years and they were free I never never paid for them to just had them as a free account and had over 300,000 downloads you know between you know over the years between 2011 and earlier this year but then I deleted them and just, and just decided to use Spreaker instead and I kind of regret it really because I had a I guess people were regularly going back to them and using them maybe some people were downloading some people were playing but just to, to look at a podcast and see the stats was just a really nice feeling and to see you know, 25,000 people or 30,000 people 30,000 downloads or you know for each one it's just quite a nice feeling but that's okay it doesn't you know it's still those sessions are still out there somewhere you know people that download that have downloaded my audios and perhaps my videos as well over the years they got to be somewhere there's got to be thousands around the world that are maybe <laughs> ended up in the deletion box maybe deleted maybe they're on people's hard drives and they've forgotten about them maybe they're on people's um, phones and they're, they're listening to them I'm sure not everybody that downloads my stuff are just deleting them it seems a bit weird that I'd have 300 people maybe download or 500 people in a day download you know audios and then they'd, they'd be gone they'd, I'm sure they wouldn't just delete them straight away why would they do why would they download them to start with that's what I think I don't know but um, I've been thinking about the I go in and out of sort of wondering about this stuff that I do and whether whether you know whether it's useful. Uh, especially when I do these sessions well, they're not really sessions are they these audios, these recordings so I think you know in some ways it's a complete waste of time <laughs> but in other ways I can see the value in them because it could be nice to have somebody talking to you, telling you to go to sleep, telling you to notice the sense of relaxation that you have in your body and focusing on those different parts of your body and, you know, the focus of attention. The thing is, which is really good, I mean, focus is what hypnosis is, that's really all it is, focus of attention, focusing on one thing more and more to the uh, exclusion of other things you know surrounding your mind around an idea and that, that idea could be having more confidence that idea could be to get in touch and to really appreciate yourself whatever it could be lots of different things so with sleep you know I've, I've had a probably more success I say success um, I gauge my success by the downloads and the plays that's I suppose that's all I can really gauge it on I've had some feedback but I don't really ask for feedback anymore I used to years ago 
I had a pretty much a PDF book full of uh, testimonials and praise and lovely words that people had written me. You know, I had about what was it? Yeah, a good fifty pages worth of uh, uh, testimonials, and I actually did format it into a PDF book, which people could download if they wanted to read it. And but I lost it along the way. I think it must have been on one of my laptops that broke. So yeah, I lost a lot of that stuff. So I suppose now you know, with the website as it is, you can always go on there and say something nice if you choose it's uh, but I kind of I think it's it's with the there's a mentality with maybe a nightclub or a comedy club or a theatre you know people vote with their feet or with their bums you know they kind of if they turn up they're voting. That it's you know if they keep people keep coming back, then they're voting in a positive way. If you've got a theatre and most of the seats have got bottoms on them, when the shows are on, then that's a success, isn't it? Maybe not financially because I don't know about this. You know how much stuff costs. You know for people in theatres, but for me this isn't about money because I don't make any money actually it costs me money to do it so success would be the stats for the amount of people around the world that download or play the audios or watch the videos or uh, maybe visit my website you know and people from all over the world visit and download and it's I love it I love that I love looking at the stats because with SoundCloud they're very they're very good with their stats they are very specific with even towns you know um, or cities so they, they give the stats of which sessions are the most popular on that day um, but then they'll actually break the stats down to which country has the most visitors, which cities have the most visitors, uh, what uh, device is being used, whether it's an Android phone or an iPhone or Google, I suppose Google is Android, isn't it? Um, or if it's on a laptop, Chrome. Uh, yeah, so it kind of gives you, it gives me or you know, lots of quite detailed stats. But the only the only people that are monitored are people that log in. So I'm not sure if they can. They'll show the stats of people that haven't logged in. So you don't have to log into SoundCloud to use it. And also, a lot of the people that listen to the SoundCloud audios listen via lots of other different podcast hosts directories things like that you know as in iTunes or Podchaser or there's so many so many different ones that I'm uh, on so it's, it's quite a nice feeling to know that there's somebody it's always somebody out there in the world you know that's the whole sentence. There's always somebody out there in the world. I mean, there's always, it's kind of always someone in the world, pretty much every second of the day, listening to me somewhere. And it's, it's quite a nice feeling, I suppose. And that's just from the plays and the downloads. That's not to say you know how many people listen and re-listen to the downloads that they've downloaded so it's, it's quite a good it's quite a cool uh, thing 
to be doing, I suppose. I mean, there's definitely worse things I could do, worse things I could be spending my time doing. So going back to these sessions, these let me bore you to sleep. So you got the the sessions that would, you know, sort of tell you what to do or guide you verbally or maybe have music connected. And then you've got this where I don't tell you to do anything. So you're not focusing on anything really. Maybe you're more focused on my voice, but maybe not the words as much as the tone, the the vibration, maybe the timber. I can't say timber without thinking of chopping down trees. Not that I've ever actually chopped down a tree. Or did I, when I was a kid? I remember once I was chopping some wood. I think I was trying to chop something anyway. And I missed it. And I ended up the axe and I hit, I hit my knee. And how, how, how did I miss a tree and then hit my knee instead? Luckily it was... Uh, a fairly blunt axe so it hurt but it didn't didn't cut me I still got both legs it's been really hot today and the last few days it's been very quite stuffy you know a bit a bit whew. And I don't really go out that much, apart from to take Andre out or if I have to go to the shops. Because I can't always get food delivered, you know, due to bills coming out of my bank account. And it's the first of the month today, tomorrow, because it's Sunday today, I think tomorrow will be the day where my a lot of my direct debits go out of my account. Instead of being the first of the month, it will probably have been thrown over to Tuesday, or to Monday rather, and that will leave me with pretty much very little after council tax and television license and the internet and my phone. That's about a hundred pound or together. I think there's something else, but I can't remember what it is. Council tax, TV license. Oh, so yeah, I've got a, a tax bill that I have to pay. That I had, um... oh, this is a good boring story. I'll tell you about this. Back in 2000 and 13, 2014, I don't know, but anyway, it was, I got a tax bill for about 2,000 pound, two and a half thousand pound, um, because I'd previously been unemployed, uh, unemployed, self-employed, and then I lost loads of work due to the government cuts and the austerity things that have been going on, so I pretty much I had about four hours work a week which wasn't enough to even pay the rent you know so I got a job but for the first three months of working I didn't pay any tax and when I did my self-assessment tax thing I didn't include the job in it in the tax um, self-employed tax thing that I did um, 
I didn't realise I had to. I just didn't purposely avoid it. I just assumed that they'd know that it would all be like, you know, they'd know what was going on. Anyway, they asked for, they said uh, that I'd missed out and hadn't declared that I'd been working. Um, so I ended up having to pay two and a half thousand. So I said to them, but why is it two and a half thousand? You know, they said, well, we also get, I want your tax for next year. So they, they decided that the tax, they, they'd worked out my tax for the year coming up and I had to pay it now, not at the end of next year, which seemed like a really, really daft um, idea, really. One of the most silliest ideas, I think. Not in the world, but for the sake of this story. And I said, well, I've closed my business. It's already closed. I've already told the tax man and the officially I'd closed it. I was no longer self-employed. So they said, okay, well, you owe 1250 or something like that. So they, they, they kind of halved it. And then I said, well, I'm now unemployed. I, I was unemployed at this point. So I can't, I don't have that amount of money. And I spoke to them on the phone. They said, how much can you pay? I said, well, I'm getting about £70 a week at the moment. And I don't really have hardly anything to pay that I can afford to pay out of that. And they said, well, leave it with us and we'll send you a letter telling you how much that we, you know, will sort of need off you every week. So about a week later, it might have been, it might have been two weeks, it might have been three days, it might have been eight days, I really don't know. I, I suppose it's really that important, but it was, it wasn't like a long wait. They sent me a letter, I think it was quite quickly actually. I think when it comes to, when you owe people money, especially the tax man or woman, and they're pretty quick to uh, get a letter out and they said they wanted £45 a week from me and I phoned them up and I said uh, at this point I completely I did lose the plot but I won't go into that but it was very it was very quite a difficult little period actually but uh, I phoned them up and I said, you know, I, I'm, I've got 70 pound a week coming in and you're asking for 45 pound a week to pay back this tax. They said, yeah. I said, can you see, can you, have you, can you see what the problem is here? And, uh, the man on the phone said, yeah, I can. He said, I can't, I can't believe that they've asked you that, ma that much money. He said, uh, how's 43 pound a week sound? I said, yeah, it sounds brilliant. And they hung up and uh, everything was good. No, that didn't happen. I said, uh, basically we talked. He said, how much can you afford? I said, you know, we, ba we came to an agreement of five pound a week. And he said, you know, it's going to take, how much is five pound a week over a year? 20 pound a week over a year is a thousand pound. 10 pound would be 500, five pound would be 250. So 250 pound a year is what I've been paying back. So I've been paying five pound a week every Monday 
pretty much since 2014. So, so yeah, I've fully got another, should be coming near the end of it. So if it's five years, yeah, it's like five years to pay it off. So I should be coming near the end. I reckon by the end of this year it should pretty much be paid off. But I've only missed it once. There was once when there was no money in there and, and I think they sent me a letter. But since then I've made sure the money's always in. Always make sure there's five pound in my account on the Monday, because it's not a it's not a department to mess with when it comes to tax. You know, it's uh, it's as serious as it gets with uh, in the country that I live in anyway. So pretty much. It's at the top of the list of crimes, you know, when it comes to uh, not paying the correct amount of tax. I had a little drink there. Mm. It's cooling down a little bit now, which is nice. Andre is having a little bit of food. He's having a little, little munch munch. Yeah, I was up all night again last night. Till about six or seven. And then in bed. All day. It's okay, I feel alright if I'm getting stuff done. You know, I've working on a website and getting, you know, organising all my stuff into categories and it's not it's it's not that it's difficult, but it is a little bit a little bit tedious. You know, very repetitive. A bit like me, really. Very repetitive, very tedious. You know, just uh, when I do these sessions, not not in real life. In real life, I'm like an action man. I'm just, it's amazing. I'm like an astronaut. An astronaut and a hairdresser mixed together. Just, you know, the excitement both, imagine that, an astronaut and a hairdresser, you know, I can, uh, I can go to the moon, then I can talk about it for the next 40 years, that's one of the good things really isn't it, people like Buzz Aldrin or, or Buzz, whatever his name is, I wonder if that's his real name, and you know whoever it was that went to the moon you know the first landing they've just been even now they're in demand for interviews and documentaries and uh, you know after dinner speeches they've all done really well haven't they I remember someone saying, I can't remember what I said. I think this is something that I would do, is uh, I kind of exaggerate sometimes. So if I have a pen that doesn't work, and the pen or the, a light bulb doesn't work, you know, something like that, I just, I say, I can't believe a light bulb doesn't work. We put a, put a man on the moon 60 years ago, but we still can't get it light bulbs that work properly or I don't know it can be anything like that it's just an exaggeration I think I said this to someone 
a couple of years ago and they said and they looked at me as if I just I don't know it's you know that look you get from someone a kind of not disgust but a kind of uh, like really I don't know quite how to explain it but it's as if I just I was in a restaurant and I was serving someone food and the man was on one knee proposing to the love of his life and just as she says about to say I do I just turn around bent over and let off a big massive fart in their faces it's there was that kind of look and she said what are you do you mean you believe that they went to the moon do you um, well you know we have to believe something don't we imagine going through life where you just don't believe anything ever that anyone ever says that's that's not I can't imagine that would be a very nice uh, experience and this is I've seen his documentaries you know oh the moon landing was faked and all this stuff like well firstly I don't care it makes no difference at all to me if it was faked but I suppose the reason why some people would be interested is because of the amount of money that was spent on it I think even in the 60s they spent billions so if they didn't you know you think 69 That would have cost maybe at most what a million dollars to film the whole thing to put it together and that's a lot of money back then plus it was in black and white wasn't it ideal for the moon so where did the rest of the money go if it was fake I still find it's uh, I know I shouldn't get amused by people's beliefs but I don't think it's that I, I necessarily get amused that I find people's beliefs funny I sometimes I find they're the strength of people's belief systems uh, kind of amusing how this there's not one question <laughs> it's like no, that is exactly what is based on what they've been taught yeah I do find that kind of there's some links that people actually I don't always find it funny but I find it interesting and other words what lengths some people will go in order to uphold this belief system that they have been taught that's why for me one of my goals in life is to reduce as many beliefs and opinions as I can reduce them um, loosen them weaken them question them
Yeah, I find that interesting. Andre's just now gone for a little sleepy. Gone for sleep sleep. I do baby him so much. It's ridiculous. He's got the he's gotta be the most babied ferret in existence. I don't think anybody else would actually treat a ferret like a little baby the way I do. He's if I could he would happily have me breastfeed him and if you've seen his teeth you understand why I wouldn't want to do that plus I don't produce milk because I'm not female although I suppose some males produce milk it's all to do with hormones and stuff in it but um, I don't I don't lactate and I don't think I'd that's weird, I don't think I'd want to. No. It's uh I don't think it's really my role in life to um to lactate is a very strange sentence. Oh another thing I've been doing is gradually Gradually, I've been uploading and organizing my videos, the archived videos from 2006 to 2017 onto my YouTube channel. So there's about 380, something like that, so far uploaded. And I'm just doing it gradually. I've put in, you know, I've titled them saying it's an archive so people can just, if they want to watch them, they can, but it's there. Sort of a bit prosperity. Is it prosperity? Prosperity. For prosper Being prosperous, prosperity, that's well being, isn't it? Pros for prosperity. Posterity, post, posteri posterior, posterity, prosperity, propensity, propensity, posterity. I don't know. For the future, it's basically just there. I'm also. Uh, trying to convert any new audio that I produce into a video as well. Plus, I'm going to get my camera out probably next week and start to make some videos. And also, I will so I'll make the video and at the same time I'll record it I'll do a recorder the digital recorder thing that I've got here listening to me at the same time so it should 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 be okay should work out fine uh, which is good and maybe do some courses um, I don't know but I just like to, once I've got everything organized on my website, on YouTube, uh, most of the stuff is organized on the podcasts. Although I've still got quite a few podcasts to pre prepare or to create. Because what I've done, because I've got 200 plus, I think it's 280, I don't know something like that, self-development videos. So I've been trying to organize those sessions into categories and making a podcast for that category. So 
for example, I've got one called Jason Newland Talks About Kindness. And I've put all my kindness sessions there. And I've got um, Jason Newland Talks About Anger. And I've got my anger sessions. So it's, you know, I'm trying to get things a bit more organised rather than just one big bunch of stuff. I just think that's more useful for people. I think. I hope so anyway. And that's kind of my aim is to try and be as useful as possible with things that I do. Oh, my stomach just made a weird noise. And I don't know why. It's pretty calm, pretty quiet at the moment. Because it's the summer, there's been, I don't know, earlier there's quite a lot of loud people around. Which is, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about that. I just sometimes I feel, it sounds like they're having arguments and just distracts me a little bit from my knitting no I don't don't knit I thought about starting knitting but I just just I don't think I can do it I just don't think I could bring myself to no I don't know I don't think and the thing is with knitting who would I give stuff to who really wears woolen clothes anymore I don't know anybody that does I'm sure people do but in the winter it's it's. I don't know I just I don't I suppose like really I like jumpers in the winter but I like loose jumpers I like big loose because I have to wear large or extra large anyway, but I don't like tight clothes. don't like the restriction of it. I like to be able to just feel like I would if I was naked. Not naked, but you know, you know what I mean, the, the looseness, the non-restrictedness, didness. So that's that's kind of the same with trousers or you know anything like that I like to just feel loose and relaxed the other day actually I think it was Wednesday I got myself some boxer shorts I got four pairs I got some socks and I got some uh, two pairs of tracksuit bottoms That is the most boring thing I've said today. You know, sometimes I'll actually be with someone and I'll be talking and I lose interest, not in them, but in myself. I lose interest in what I'm about to say. Sometimes I'll actually stop mid-sentence and just say, no, nah, I'm bored with that. I think, I don't know, I just, I'd like to have less boring conversations. And by boring, I think it's just, it's not even a, it's a case of, it's really a boring conversation, it's just because it doesn't involve me. I suppose I like talking about myself. I know that that is, I suppose, boring for others. But, I don't really, really do chat for the sake of it, unless it's, I can do small talk at a bus stop, ideally with an elderly person. I prefer to talk to elderly people, um, 
because they're just friendlier, I find. And I've got an inbuilt respect for elderly people. It's just, uh, just it's just there. And they're also funny as well. And I think it's realizing, especially now, as I'm reaching towards 50, and some of these people I talk to, they may be 20 years older than me. It's not a lot, really. So they may be 70. And just realizing that they've also got thoughts and feelings and personalities and senses of humour and they've had experiences and I've always known that but it's just I don't know I think when I was younger I used to think maybe that as people got older they just maybe their brains got a bit crusty you know it's, it's like became a bit docile so I used to meet some people when I was younger and it wasn't necessarily young people but some some men probably more so middle aged so I was in my 20s and I'd meet men in their 40s and 50s and they just seemed like they were just they'd given up and I couldn't understand it But that was probably more that, you know, I didn't relate to them and they didn't relate to me. And it was, I was probably annoying, if anything. It's hard to believe that I could ever be annoying, isn't it? But I was, you know, I used to, yeah, I didn't have uh, much in the way of censorship, self-censorship back then. Self-editing wasn't a thing I had. I just say and do whatever I wanted, really, without thinking of the consequences. Never really with malice, generally. Um, I always had this, I had this worry that I didn't, I didn't want to end up being um, I suppose being middle-aged and just just having no activity in my brain but the thing is that was just my perception back then of course they've got activity we've all got activity in our brains it's just my perception was so self-absorbed that I just assumed that other people just because they weren't telling me what they were thinking about didn't mean that they weren't thinking I'm just I suppose I I like to talk about what I'm thinking about or what I'm feeling if I have the opportunity but I don't know many people that like to do that you know one of, a lot of people that I've known they maybe need to need to do it. They need to funnel the emotions through a different kind of for, format and present it in a, a different way. And through analogy or through stories of something that someone else did, or I, I'm not sure. Maybe putting their energy, expressing their their emotions through sport, watching football, for example, and allowing themselves to be emotional then instead of in day-to-day -day life. And I was never really able to do that. I'm not saying that I express my emotions generally because I don't I don't know many people that like to talk about 
feelings and I don't mean feelings as in gushy sentimentality just like in the moment stuff maybe I don't know I don't know I've come up with some stuff don't I oh, excuse me I think a nice belch, a nice fizzy belch is a good time to end this here session. I've been talking for an hour again, I can't believe it. I hope that no one's really listening anyway. I'm hoping that by now you'd have fallen asleep out of complete and utter boredom and that's what this is about something I learned years ago that generally people don't seem that interested <laughs> in other people as much as they are in themselves and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that's just the way, way of the world. But our own stories are maybe more interesting to ourselves than they will ever be to others. You know, someone said to me, um, "This is a friend, believe it or not. This is a friend." And I said to her that she's another person that keeps going on about how I should charge for what I do. And if I charge one dollar for every session and I'm getting 5,000 downloads, that's $5,000 a week. And like, yeah, but if I charged a dollar, I wouldn't get 5,000 downloads. It would, you know, it's just, there's that. I'd rather. I don't know, the way I see it, if I got 400 downloads a week, which would be enough for me to live on, probably, if I got paid for each one, I'd rather have 5,000 a week and get paid nothing, because at least then I'm reaching an audience, a wider audience. You know, it's... I don't know what is so difficult for people to understand the idea of it's free I do this it's a free service I do it to help people that's it I thought I've been doing it long enough for those that know me to kind of understand that but still I had two conversations last week, two people that are sort of close people in my life, and they still don't get it, still. 12 and a half years I've been doing this online, still they don't get it, but that's okay. Although, my friend, I said to her, you know, Maybe I can make a living out of producing a product and writing a book, for example. And I thought, there's a book, a couple of ideas I've had. One is uh, Life of a Bipolar Hypnotist, where I talk about the bipolar uh, mental illness that I've dealt with since I was a child and you know the ups and downs and all that stuff and talk about my childhood and uh, the various issues that I've faced uh, you know because of the kind of childhood I had and also because of the illness I've had and the other book would be called uh, Why Is It Free? And that book would be, it wouldn't be a big book, it wouldn't be a large, you know, 
thick thousand pages it would just be a, a fairly short read but it would just it would be about this free service that I've been offering online since 2006 just talking about it talking about how I got started because you know it wasn't supposed to be the way it is it didn't you know I didn't aim to do it how I have done it it's all come about and um, through different circumstances you know like just like life really um, in January 2006 I wanted to break the world record for the biggest hypnosis audience and it was going to be to stop smoking that was what I was doing that's why I printed up leaflets for and then the other side I thought oh I'll I'll offer a free chronic pain relief service as well so I did that and I did that in colour so I did uh, postcards the stop smoking thing on black and white side and in the colour it was the chronic pain relief free chronic pain relief service which I had started in 2004 and been trying to promote and had no pretty much no interest I had a little bit but very little interest I'd seen a few people for relaxation and stuff but that's it but 2006 I had no intention of making recordings or videos at all and then it just you know built from there but so I was going to do you know for talking about writing that book and I've tried to, to write it a few times anyway my friend said to me who would want to read about you who would want to read about your life isn't it amazing how just one sentence one question can go be quite um, I, I, find, I found it funny initially and then, then I then I didn't yeah anyway I will write that book as soon as I've finished what I'm doing online everything's all sorted and everything like that then I think I'm gonna start looking at maybe spending a month working on a book trying to put it together and um, just tell my story about the why it's free it's gonna be called why is it free because that's the question I've been asked so many times And I feel the fact that I'm still offering this free service means I don't have to explain why it's free. It's free because it's a free service. You know, it's called a beef burger because beef is in it. It's a beef, you know, it's, it's called... I'm trying to think. A hot air balloon. Because it's got... It's a balloon with hot air in it. You, you know what I mean? It's that's not a good example anyway I'm going to go and I shall see you speak to you next time sleep well